All right, guys, this video is on calculating external reaction forces. Um, we've learned a little bit about static equilibrium, so we want to learn kind of how to apply uh, what we know and how to use what we know about static equilibrium in order to figure out what the specific reaction forces are going to be for a particular example. So the example that I have laid out here, we've got a flat bridge with 100 newtons of force acting downward on that bridge. So a couple of things that we want to talk about. Uh, number one is uh, we need to establish a pin joint and a roller. And so uh, the first is establishing a pin joint. And that pin joint always has external forces in both the X and the Y directions. Next, we uh, establish our roller joint. And notice the notation that goes along with these. And we... Uh, include specific references to each joint. We call this joint A and this joint B and then we name the forces accordingly. The roller joint only supports ex external forces in the Y direction. In other words, it allows for side-to-side -side movement, so there's no force being applied at that joint in the X direction. Um, hence, we only have a force at B in the Y direction on the roller joint. All right, so here's our scenario. We've got our pin joint and our roller joint. And here's a specific, uh, we're going to plug some numbers in here just to give you an idea of the distances. Um, so this thing, this force is being applied uh, directly in the middle of this flat bridge. And so we want to calculate the external forces at each joint on the beam. And based on those static equilibrium equations, we know three things. We know that the sum of the forces in the x is zero, the sum of the forces in the y is zero, and the sum of the moments, or the sum of the rotational forces, also have to be zero. In other words, all these forces have to balance out. The forces in the x have to balance out, the forces in the y have to balance out, and the rotational forces have to balance out. All right, so let's check out uh, the process of calculating these external reaction forces at each joint. So the first thing we need to do is establish where our pin and our roller are. So in this particular case, we establish a pin right here and the roller at joint B. And let me try to keep it color coded for you, make things a little bit easier. All right, so we said um, at the pin joint, we've always got a force that's acting in the Y direction. So there's my force at A in the Y direction. I've also got a force at A acting in the X direction. So we'll label that F at A in the X direction. Over here at the roller, we've got a force acting only in the Y direction, nothing in the X direction. So we'll label this the force at B in the Y direction. So we've got our uh, external forces labeled. So now we want to go through and, and see how to make use of these, uh, these equations of static equilibrium. All right, so the first equation is that we know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction have to balance out. They have to equal zero if this thing is in static equilibrium. So we look up at our diagram and try to figure out which forces are in the x direction. Well, I've got a force in the x direction right here. This is in the y this is in the negative y direction. This is in the positive y direction. So the only one I have to account for for this particular equation is the force at A. And the x. And so because that's the only one, we know that that force is going to be 0. So there is no force acting in the x direction for this particular example. Next one we're going to look at are the forces in the y direction. The sum of all those forces have to balance out to zero. So I'm going to look up here at my diagram. My first force in the y direction is F at A in the y direction. My second one is this 100 Newton force acting downward. Um, and so this is one of the biggest things that you have to pay attention to. Because it's acting downward, we need to attach a negative sign to that. 
All right, so this is actually acting downward at 100 newtons. And then my third one is the force at B in the Y direction. And that's acting upward, so I add that. And all those have to equal zero. All right, so a little bit of simplification. I can move some things around. And when I do that, I end up with the force at A in the Y added to the force at B in the Y. So those two combined reaction forces, this guy right here and this guy right here, have to balance out the force that's acting downward. So both of those are going to add up to 100. So the third one over here is the, are the rotational forces. And so what we have to do is we have to account for all of the forces that are going on up here. And we had a little bit of discussion about this. These rotational forces are dependent upon their relative location to the pin. So we've established that our pin is right here. There's that joint right there. And so all of these are going to be dependent upon the pin. So when we, when we put together our equation, we got to make sure that not only do we account for the forces, but we account for how far they are from that pin joint. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our FAX. So the force at A in the X direction. And what we do is we take the force and we multiply it by how far it is away from the pin. Um, this force is actually at the pin, and so it is zero units away from the pin. So we take our force, we multiply it by the distance from the pin, and... Um, and we go from there. All right, the next one is FAY. That's acting in the positive direction. Generally, because we're talking about rotational force, we have to think about if we rotated this thing, if we applied a force at that pin and it caused the rotation, which way would it rotate? Well, because this is at the pin, it's not going to rotate it at all. And so this is a pretty simple calculation. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So, um, when we put this into the equation, we add the force at A in the Y direction and its relative location to the pin. It's on the pin, so it's not any distance away from the pin, so that's times zero as well. All right, so looking at our diagram, we've got this force, we've got this force. Now we need to move over to the next force, and that's the 100 newtons acting downward. And again, these are rotational forces, so we need to think about this. If we were to uh, think about how this would make this thing rotate around the pin, if we push down on this beam, this would make it rotate this way. And if you think back to um, our trigs and how we define angle or rotational, uh, rotational angles, rotating in the counterclockwise direction, that would give us negative rotation. Remember, we always define angles based on starting in that on that X axis and rotating this way. And so if we rotate in the opposite way, that's negative rotation. So when we account for this force, we need to subtract this. This is one of the one of the really important things that we pay attention to are the signs that, that we attach to these particular forces. All right, so again, this force right here would cause negative rotation. So we subtract that force and that force is 100. And then the relative location to the pin, we're going to multiply that. We see that this is 5 units away from the pin. So we subtract 100 times 5 in order to account for that force. The last one we need to, to tack on here is this force at B in the Y direction. Again, which way would this rotate? If, we, if this force is applied upward, this thing would rotate in the counterclockwise uh, movement. I think I said counterclockwise for this one. This one, this one is clockwise. Negative is actually clockwise. This is positive rotation. So when we account for this one, we're going to add the force at B in the y direction and multiply that by its relative location to the pin. Well, we see we go over 5, we get halfway, we go over another 5, we get to our force. So that's 10 units away from the pin. 
and we've got all of our forces so the last thing that we need to do is make sure that we understand this thing is going to be set equal to zero. So let me shift some stuff over here, give me a little bit more room. So we've got all these forces and their relative locations to the pin. I finally got that stuff shifted over and that's equal to zero. So basically all of these are going to balance out. So the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to do a little bit of simplification. Anything times zero is zero, so that's going to drop off. Same thing here. This one's going to drop off. And what I'm left with is negative 500 plus the force at B in the Y direction times 10 is going to be equal to zero. Simplify a little bit, we get 10 times the force at B in the Y. We're going to move our 500 over, so add 500 to both sides. Divide by 10, and we've figured out what this force at B in the Y direction is going to be. That's going to be 50 Newtons. Once you figure out a force, make sure you circle it so that you know that you've identified that. So the last step here is we've got this equation and we weren't able to solve anything for this equation, but now we've got one of the pieces here. And when we plug in that piece, when we substitute that piece, we're able to solve for the force at A in the Y direction. Substitute in 50, so we get plus 50 Newtons is equal to 100 Newtons. And we've got the force at A in the Y direction is going to be equal to 50 newtons as well. So if we go back up and look at our original here, this makes perfect sense. Because this thing was in the middle, it's going to apply an equal amount of force to both joint A and joint B. And so the reaction forces have to be equivalent and they also have to balance out. So last thing is uh, we're going to look at all of the forces, make sure that we know what these quantities are. So the force at A in the X direction we figured out has to be zero. The force at A in the Y direction we were able to figure out was 50 Newtons. And the force at B in the Y direction we figured out was also 50 Newtons. And we've solved for all of the external reaction forces in this particular diagram.